Hey, book community. So today I'm going to be participating in the Indie Fantasy Reader book tag. I don't think I've been tagged in this already. I know I've been tagged in some of these things in the past and I didn't get a notification. So I didn't know until after the fact that I went back and seen that I was actually tagged. So if you've tagged me, thanks. If not, I'm a little salty about that. No, just joking. But I want to participate in this anyway, because I have things I want to say about it. So anyway, Indie Fantasy Reader Book Tag. So the questions are here. And they're going to be listed below. Number one, what got me into reading in Indie Fantasy? Well, my answer here is in general book talk, booktube. I would not have known about it uh, had it not been for book talk, but specifically Tori Talks, her channel. That would be the first place that I heard about it because she introduced me to my first indie book, which I'll probably talk about here in a few minutes, but also Andrew's Wizardly Reads. So that's where I heard about indie fantasy books. Now, I mean, there are several places where I get it from now, but that would be the first. Number two, what is my favorite thing about indie fantasy? I wrote two things here. Number one is the book covers. Everybody knows that indie fantasy is by far beating traditional fantasy on book covers. Uh, maybe it's because you know, they really want to get their stuff out there and they want to make an impression so people are attracted to their books on first sight. It's good to judge a book by its cover sometimes. Uh, and so maybe that's the reason, but whatever the reason may be, uh, you can talk to some indie fantasy authors about that. Whatever the reason may be, they're doing a great job. And I'm actually going to highlight one particular here in another question. Also, another reason that, uh, that, I, that one of my favorite things about indie fantasy is the fact that they're able to tell a story that they want to tell. You know, when you go the traditional route, and I know there's positives about this, um, that there's editing and re-editing, and you send it to the editor, and they say, hey, take this part out, add something about this, and, and that may work out fine. I'm sure it's worked out fine for a long time, but with indie fantasy, they get to tell a story that they want to tell, and, and I appreciate that. So number three, what is my favorite indie fantasy book series? I'm going to be totally transparent with this. Before last January, I had never read an indie fantasy book. This is new to me. This year, I have read several, and I plan on reading more. I'm currently reading a few and plan on reviewing them on my channel, as well as on other uh Forums, forums. So, but my favorite right now is the Adan trilogy by Philip Chase. I the first two books, which was this is the third book actually. He just released this uh, very recently. So the first book, The Way of Adan. When I read that, I thought I love this. This is a great story. I want more. And then I went and, and in that there was a lot of traditional fantasy tropes. There was a, just a lot of what we've already read, but told in a in a in a well written way and. I appreciated that. And then you come to book two, The Prophet of Adam, and it seems like Philip just goes out on a limb and really expands his world, and you see more of his beautiful writing, and really kind of goes in a direction with some of the story that I wasn't expecting, and I wanted more. And then I got to book three. Now, I am currently reading this book. I'm, I'm close to 60% of the way through, and th this is unlike any fantasy book I've ever read. I believe Philip has taken a risk, uh, and I don't know how this risk is going to pay uh, pay out for other fantasy readers, but for me, I have fallen in love with this book. I'm only, like I said, I'm only about 60% of the way through the book, and already this, unless something drastic changes, this might be my favorite fantasy book of all time. Uh, I have loved it. I have appreciated what he's done in it. He is tackling issues in it that other people don't really tackle, at least not, not as forward as he seems to be. And I am loving this book. So that is my favorite indie fantasy, indie fantasy series right now. Number four, what is one high priority indie fantasy on my TBR? All right, I'm going to answer what probably the top of my list is. But I'm also going to give you a few others because I want to kind of highlight a few on this. Number one, I had mentioned a while back that my wife had gotten me a book, had, had given me a book series for our anniversary. I asked for it. She delivered. And it is 
The Voice of War. Well, actually, I got all three books. I don't have all three books here with me because I don't have room to have them around me. But anyway, Zach, Zach Argyle, this is Threadlight, the first book of Threadlight. And I've heard so much great about this. I know he has done a, a Kickstarter for a special edition uh, here recently. I didn't, I wasn't able to be involved in that, but I did want to get his hardback books. And I thank my wife for giving that to me. And I look forward, this is high priority on my list. This will probably, one, probably be one of the first, I imagine one of the first indie fantasies I read in 2024. But also, there are some others I want to talk about. Heliotrope by Palmer Pickering. Again, this is another one off because of BookTube and Book Twitter that I've heard a lot about, and I, I want to read it. I really didn't, don't even know what it's about. I had to read the back of the book here to even get an idea what it's about. And of course, I read it and it piques my interest. This is one that I, and really I've heard a lot more about the author than I've heard about the book. Uh, I've really heard a lot of people talking about how well done this book is. And so I want to read it. And then I want to highlight another one, which is probably lesser known, but I don't know that it should be lesser known. And that is Whispers of a World Breaker by Corey Ratcliffe. Um, he has a novella out that's a prequel novella. And I, I actually read that first, kind of getting introduced into his world. I'll say if you're a fan of Ryan Cahill and The Bound and the Broken, which I am, this is going to pique your interest because there's there are some there are some similarities, but there's also similarities with, between this and, and other books. It is a dragon riding book. Uh, and who doesn't need another dragon riding book in their life? So anyway, this is another one that I anticipate reading. I don't know when I'll be able to get to it, but it is uh, a priority on my list. And then one other I'm going to highlight, there are so many that I can highlight, but one other that I'm going to highlight is by Andrew Meredith. This is, and I am going to butcher this word. I can't even say it. Cal I have been saying Calatin Saga, but I know that's wrong. But anyway, you see it. This is um, Deathless Beast. This is book one of his series, The Caladian. I, I, I'm going to have to figure out how to say that. I've never tried to say it in public. So anyway, this is volume one, and this is one that I look forward to. Again, just like I said with um, Palmer Pickering, this is one that I look forward to because I have loved my interactions with Andrew Meredith on Twitter. Uh, and, and, and the one way to pull me in is to have a great, I'm a great personality, uh, just friendly, helping other people. And I've seen that with him on Twitter and I appreciate it. And I want to read his book. All right. Number five, where do I find out about indie fantasy books? I've really already said this several times already on this video. Um, BookTube and Book Twitter. That's where I find out uh, about in, indie fantasy books the most. Number six, what book would I recommend to someone who's just starting to read indie fantasy? I'm going to give you a recommendation. There's probably hundreds of places that you can start um, indie fantasy. I'm going to give you where I started because that's my experience. I started with Never Die by Rob J. Hayes. I'm not going to turn it around just yet, and there's a reason for that. Uh, you'll see later on. But uh, this is this is where I started the action, the story that he tells, this is book one of his um, his series, and I love this book. So anyway, that is one, I showed it to you. So anyway, that is one book that I would recommend to start. It's, it's a short read, and it was great. Um, all right, number seven, what is your favorite indie fantasy cover? Well, I've already revealed it. It is this. If if that doesn't make you want to buy, I want I want the art. I just want to buy the art, and I know you can do that. This is um, Felix Ortiz art, actually. Which, if you don't know the name Felix, Felix Ortiz, you need to look him up because he has some awesome things. This is never died. This is Felix Ortiz art. It's wonderful. It's my favorite, and there are so many great things to choose from. And in fact, as I go through and look at different different indie fantasy books and see fantasy, uh, the art that I love, Felix Ortiz's art usually comes to the top for me. All right. Number eight, do I approach indie fantasy reading and reviewing differently? 
Yes and no. And here's what I mean by that. No, I don't approach it differently in that, that in my mind, I say, all right, I'm going to read and review traditional fantasy, traditional published fantasy, and that's high quality. Okay, now I'm reviewing self-pub um, indie fantasy, and that's lower quality. So no, I don't view it like that. Some of the best books I've read this year has been indie fantasy. I would rate them above some traditional fantasy books. So I don't, I don't view them differently as far as quality. I do view them differently in this life that sometimes they go up my list on what I'm going to review next because, let's face it, it's not going to hurt George R. R. Martin, which is an author that I haven't read yet. It's not going to hurt George R. R. Martin or really help George R. R. Martin if I do or don't rate review his book anytime soon. Um, but as far as some indie fantasy authors, a review helps their book. It helps their work. It helps get their name out. And so I would encourage you, if you... Uh, haven't read any indie fantasy, or if you have read indie fantasy and you haven't left a review yet, leave a review. I'm not saying you have to write this uh, eloquent and long statement. No. Rate it. Say, I liked the book on Amazon or on Goodreads. I liked the book. Say say something. Just, just say something to get their reviews up because that does help them. All right. Next, number nine. What is an upcoming indie fantasy release I am looking forward to? Again, there are so many that I could say on this. The one I'm going to say, and I'm obviously I don't have it yet because it's upcoming, Elegy of a Fragmented Vineyard by Caden Love. This is, again, one that I have no idea what it's about, but I kind of uh, was introduced to Caden uh, through Twitter uh, and now TikTok. Uh, so I, I was introduced to him and some of his work, and I'm very interested in reading this book. And I believe it's coming out in January, so stay tuned for Elegy of a Fragmented Vineyard by Caden Love. Number 10. What indie fantasy author would I choose to write my story? I have no idea how to answer this question, um, really, because... I don't feel like my story would be at all interesting on paper. But let's just say you could take you could take a fantasy writer who's going to embellish my life and make me sound a lot more interesting than I really am. I would have to choose Ryan Cahill. Uh, this particular novella is The Fall, but that's not the point. This is one of the books of his Bound and Broken novel. But Ryan Cahill, I am hanging on to everything he writes right now. I've... I, I've technically already started A War and Ruin, which is the newest book to be released as far as the main books of a series. Uh, I plan on continuing in that. I am hanging on to everything he's writing. I love everything he's writing, and I think he can make my life sound interesting, even if it's not interesting. Number 11, what is an indie fantasy more people need to read? Once again, so many. I'm going to choose uh, the Malatu. The Ma Malitu, Malitu, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, as you can tell with a lot of other things I've said here, but by James Lloyd Dewey, and this is No Heart for a Thief. He already has uh, another one coming out in October, so look him up. I think more people need to read this. James is doing some great character work, um, and I am a character-first reader, and it really stood out to me what he's doing here in this series. Uh, this is another book that I believe Felix Ortiz, by the way, uh, did the artwork for. So anyway, check him out. All right. Well, that's my indie fantasy reader uh, book tag. Who am I going to tag? Well, I don't know who all has been tagged by this. I don't know um, <laughs> how long this has been going on. So I'm going to give two people, and if you've already been tagged, sorry. And if, you ha if, if you're not one of these two people, anybody... Consider yourself tagged because I want to see other people's opinions on this. I want to see other people's answers. Number one is Beard of Darkness Book Reviews. This is uh, another guy by the name of Matt. I've really enjoyed getting to know him, and so I think he would have a lot of good things to say because you need to check his channel out. He's doing a lot of interviews, very interesting interviews with indie fantasy authors. The next is Kay's Hidden Shelf. This is another place where I love to get by in indie fantasy Rex from. She does a wonderful job. All right. Thank you for listening and watching, and until next time, go read books.